Episode 7, the not review review of the GoPro Fusion 360 camera. Explain. You know how a review typically work. They usually start with the reviewer offering helpful information and specification on a particular product and slowly builds up to a conclusion where the reviewer offers you a recommendation on what they think of the product. Now, that is not what we're going to be doing today. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you my conclusion first and we're going to work backward. Which is that it isn't very good at what it is designed for but it is actually pretty good at what it isn't designed for and it is actually awesome at something which has basically nothing to do with its original purpose I know this might be confusing but I promise you that there is an explanation for this but to explain it we need to take a step back and take a look at what is a 360 camera simple it's a camera that's filming 360 degree, or more accurately, it is two cameras joined back to back that film in 360 degree. Very much like Roger and Bunny here, because that make this twice as cute, right? Well, actually, let's leave Bunny out of this. The problem here is as my friend TomView256 on the electric skateboarding subreddit will point out, it is a solution for a problem that doesn't exist. So when you see a great photo, do you ever think to yourself, I wonder what is the other way? As in, what is behind the camera? Well, I mean, if it was of any interest, shouldn't they have pointed the camera at it in the first place? Well, the argument would be, what if you were somewhere so awesome where you're surrounded by interesting things and just have to capture all of them? Well, I got the perfect place to test that theory. St. Louis. Did I mention that I drove across the country just to do this not a review review of the Fusion 360? Anyway, the St. Louis City Museum, which obviously had nothing to do with the city of St. Louis, naturally. And if you're not familiar with the City Museum, it's basically a giant sculpture made out of reclaimed objects that you can climb through. Think of an anthill, except it's human size. And when you're there, you're just surrounded by visual and noise of thousands of people climbing through this giant jungle gym in all directions. It is impossible to take a photograph of it all, you need a 360 degree camera, and I happen to have one. Let me show you the video. So in order to watch these 360 degree video, what you need is a VR goggle and a machine powerful enough to run one. And fortunately, we have both. So. Once you have the whole setup up and running, it's just a simple matter of opening up the GoPro VR player, which we have open, and then dragging and dropping the video file onto it, and it'll automatically start playing. So unfortunately, the first thing that hit you isn't the wow factor of being able to look all around, but it is the realization that there just aren't enough resolution. This is like watching a video shot on my 10 year old 2 megapixel trio phone camera. And trust me, nostalgia does not help here. And remember, this is what this camera is designed for. Even after you go through the trouble and expenses of getting all the right setup, it does not deliver anything close to a compelling experience. Fine, let's take a step down from the 360 video with a feature called over capturing. Now here is where the magic happens. Over capturing is just a fancy marketing term for taking part of the 360 video, flattening it out so you can edit and watch it as a regular video. And all without having to put a potato on your face. Here's that same video presented as a warped, super fish eye view. Utter chaos, but in a good and understandable way. And it is also here where you can really appreciate the built-in software stabilization. 
Here's the camera attached to the windshield of my scooter. Look how hard it is shaking. I thought there's just no way that I'll get any usable footage out of this setup. And you know what? I was wrong. Here we are on the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, infamous for being pothole ridden like the rest of New York City. Now if you look at the base of the camera attachment, notice how hard it is shaking. But look how damn smooth the rest of the video is. They really got something very interesting here. The other thing with overcapturing is that it allows you the option to aim the view at whatever you choose doing editing. Never miss that shot again. Less attention is also required doing the shoot itself, which is always a good thing, but camera position does become critical if you want to avoid getting a big old bubble head. Great, but what about this terrible software and workflow I kept hearing about, you ask? Well, it is quite simple actually. Let's start by plugging the camera to the computer. The Go Capture app automatically loads. Select the camera and then process the videos in your camera. The app helpfully notify you that generating the preview can take a long time. So this is a good time to take a break, go for a walk, use the restroom and so on. Next, we need to stitch the video. Simply select the video the desired output format and stabilization method, and voila! While the video is being processed, I would suggest taking advantage of the considerable amount of time required. Oh, I don't know, maybe get that postgraduate art degree you had always wanted or help find a cure for cancer. And after a period of time, a stitch video mysteriously appears in your hard drive, which you can then edit in Premiere Pro. You do have Premiere Pro and the GoPro plugin, right? If you don't, then you have no choice but to work with a native GoPro app, which is just about as intuitive as attempting to teach a gorilla how to do the cha-chas. Now, as tempting as the prospect of gorilla interaction might be, there is a payoff at the end of this journey. You can think of this camera as a giant super wide fish eye lens, which typically work best in an urban environment since the wide angles love straight lines and the abundant, dense architecture help reinforce a sense of scale which balance beautifully against the distortion introduced by the camera. And again, being able to manipulate the camera angle is a godsend in situations such as this, where you would never have the opportunity to do the sort of camera manipulation short of having a full crew with you. No, this ain't all cherry and cream. And like I have mentioned at the outset, this camera only works well in specific applications. In a natural setting, without any straight lines, it's a lot harder to get a sense of orientation and scale. Can you tell those trees are giant sequoia that are more than 100 feet tall? So it is pretty good at producing interesting, but sometimes bizarre footages via overcapture. So what about the thing I mentioned in the beginning that the GoPro Fusion 360 is great at? Well, this usage is so boring and uninteresting, I'm gonna to try to breeze through it as quickly as I can lest I put you all to sleep. It is actually one of the best construction survey camera ever. As an architect, uh, when we walk a construction site, we often take photos as ways of documenting progress. It is coverage, in this case, that really matter, 
and there's nothing like the coverage that a 360 degree camera offers. So it is a really great tool, but it's probably the last thing that the engineer at GoPro thought about when they made this camera. So we have come to the end of this episode. Seems like an appropriate time for any reasonable reviewer to give you a final verdict on the Fusion 360 camera. But I don't think a simple recommendation is possible. Like a VR system, the technology behind the 360 camera is so new that nothing remotely like it existed less than 10 years ago. Which means that we really haven't begun to explore what composition and storytelling technique work with this sort of camera. But I think if we keep making stuff with it, something amazing will bound to come up, right? last thing. This is the highest resolution non-professional 360 camera with a workable if painful workflow. So if you care about image quality and want a 360 camera, get the GoPro Fusion 360. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, please like the video and subscribe. It really would mean a lot to me. Now until next week, thank you.